Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Paris coming to you from Baltimore. Iraqi Prime Minister Heda al Abadi announced on Tuesday that Iraqi forces has taken back Tikrit from the IS. Now they have done so with the backing of the Iranian military on the ground and U.S. support in the air. Now joining us to talk about the strange bedfellows in the region is Patrick Coburn. Patrick Coburn is the author of The Rise of the Islamic State, ISIS, and the New Sunni Revolution. He's also a correspondent for The Independent of London. Thank you again for joining me, Patrick. Thank you. Patrick, why is Tikrit so important at this time? Well, it appears that uh, Tikrit may have fallen to uh, Iraqi government forces. At least uh, that's what they're claiming. Uh, and this is after a month's siege. Uh, Tikrit is famous as the hometown of uh, Saddam Hussein. It's not actually that big a city. It's about 200,000, about uh, 87 miles north of uh, Baghdad. And it was being attacked by the uh, uh, Shia militias that uh, um, are under the influence of Iran. The U.S. was initially not providing airstrikes. Uh, there are three or four thousand uh, U um, Iraqi government forces there. Um, the U.S. has started uh, airstrikes there, and it seems to have fallen. But what comes across from this siege is uh, a number of things. One, it's sort of it's sort of a victory, not a great victory for the government side, and they haven't won many victories against Islamic State, which remember controls an area the size bigger than Great Britain. In uh, or Western northern Iraq and eastern Syria. But it's sort of a bit of a victory if it turns out to be true that they finally captured it. ISIS didn't have that number of fighters, and the Islamic State didn't have that number of fighters there. They were holed up in an old palace of Saddam Hussein. But they're very effective with uh, uh, IEDs, improvised explosive devices, booby traps, snipers. Uh, so they hadn't quite lost until recently. Uh, a few months ago, they were talking about pressing on to Mosul, the northern capital of Iraq, that fell to Islamic State last year. Uh, that doesn't look very feasible at the moment. So what would, I think we're looking at in Iraq is a very long war. I mean, I've been just in northern Iraq talking to people who just left the Islamic State. And, yeah, our conditions are kind of tough, but uh, the uh, Islamic State is very much in control and completely merciless to anybody who opposes it. And uh, what does this tell us about what's happening in the region? We just, in our earlier segment, talked about U.S.'s contradictory position in the region. And uh, uh, here the U.S. is in, the, uh, uh, in support of uh, Iranian advancements and supports in the region. Well, yeah, I mean, it's... You know, a tremendous mess, and it's a very explosive mess, because despite all the threats against the Islamic State, it's really not that much weaker, even if it loses to Crete. Um, and the Saudis are getting much more and more militant. They're aiding the Al-Qaeda affiliate in Syria. They admit that now. Uh, they have launched this air war and may launch a ground war in Yemen. So they get, they're much more proactive than they were under this uh, the new king there. Now, that I don't think they're going to win uh, a complete victory anywhere, but it does mean that the whole region is getting hotter and hotter by the day. And I don't think the U.S. or any of its allies can think what to do about it. Also last week, there were some advancements in Kirkuk where... Um, Kirkuk, uh, also a very ethnically complex city, was taken over as well. Well, the Kurds control Kirkuk, which is in the center of the northern oil fields there. It's very important. Uh, there are lots of Kurds, Arabs, Turkmen's, you name it, who live in that area. It's very diverse. Um, but uh, there's been sort of some heavy fighting earlier in the year. Um, I don't think the Kurds will lose it. I don't think Islamic State can probably take it at this uh, moment. But you know, the uh, this is sort of a stalemate, but it's kind of a stalemate at a, at a quite a bloody level of uh, violence.
and in Syria, the Islamic State isn't uh, under much pressure. So hope of getting rid of it, of uh, overthrowing it, I think uh, are pretty limited at the moment. And uh, uh, tell us why Kirkuk is uh, also a significant and important um, city at this time. Well, Kirkuk is a, you know, the oil fields are around Kirkuk. It's a place which is known for having oil for thousands of years. Um, the Kurds want that oil. They control that area. But a lot of it's disputed territories, what used to be called the trigger line there, uh, which Arab and Kurd were mixed together. They both claimed a lot of territory. The Kurds have got it at the moment. Uh, this is much resented. So uh, all that area has become a front line. Uh, uh, you know, you've got lots of strong points. Um, uh, and the Islamic State making attacks, U.S. airstrikes to beat them back. So this is, the whole area is getting more and more uh, violent. It's becoming, I mean, Islamic State strikes me as being like a sort of Islamic Khmer Rouge, uh, an incredibly violent organization. And it's not going away. And uh, in Kirkuk, what most media is calling the epicenter of the conflict in the Middle East, why is that so? Well, I think that could be an exaggeration. The, the Kurds and the Shia aren't fighting there. They both have sort of troops there. The Kurds control it. I was in it quite uh, recently. I spoke to the, uh, interviewed the governor, uh, uh, Najm al-Din Karim, uh, at great length. Um, so... Uh, this is a prize that all sides want. Um, but the uh, no, no side is really in a position to win a decisive victory. The Islamic State is conscripting young men everywhere, calling people up, uh, very difficult to avoid conscription. So there's about six million people in the Islamic State. I think they must have well over 100,000 fighters now. Some people there say 200,000. So it's getting stronger and stronger um, in terms of numbers. And although the U.S. has launched over 2,500 airstrikes, there's no sign of uh, these really eliminating Islamic State. All right, Patrick, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.